speak student. The Aeneid, Alashmup. War is a real pain in the Aeneas. It's the same old story. Guy leaves war. Guy wanders around the Mediterranean with his followers. Guy travels through underworld. Guy finds home. Guy fights in war, wins glory, and the respect of the gods. Okay, so it's a really old story. And while Homer basically told this one in the Odyssey and the Iliad, Virgil felt there was still enough material there ripe for the picking, and so he wrote the Aeneid. But while it seems like a bit of a ripoff, the Aeneid is actually a very different kind of story. I'm not here. Aeneas is just a minor character in Homer's epics, but he's the star of the show in Virgil's eyes. Our hero loses his hometown of Troy, his family, and his friends, and is adrift on the ocean trying to figure out what to do with himself. At least he has plenty to write about in his diary. But while it seems like Aeneas is all by his lonesome, there are some gods who are quite interested in his plight. I'll bet you he goes crazy. And they've got some plans for him, and it's not to star in Castaway 2. Wilson! Aeneas' destiny is to eventually found this little town called Rome. So the gods must have really liked this guy, uh, most of them anyway. Ah, uh, I hate him so much. You don't give just anybody the Rome gig. Here's where the Aeneid departs from Homer. It becomes a story about the foundation of Rome and the fact that the gods wanted it to get built so the Romans could conquer the world. You'd think the gods would have more important things to worry about considering their soft, cushy life up on Olympus, but who can figure those guys out? I'm tired of eating grapes. Okay, let's dig even deeper here to really get to the heart of the story. Aeneas has to sacrifice a lot to get Rome. He has to choose between his love of Dido and fate. Turns out that fate has some pretty strong pull. No. Of course, those who stand in Aeneas' path have to make their own sacrifices. When he gets to Italy, the guy pretty much just waltzes in, nabs the princess Lavinia, incites a civil war, violently conquers the native Italians, and sets up shop. He didn't even try asking politely first. How rude! So those Trojans who just got their own city sacked and had to mourn the loss of all their dead buddies? Yeah, apparently they believed in the whole do unto others thing because they turned right around and sacked the next guy. Their new city is off to a great start. What's the point of this sprawling epic anyway? Is Aeneas a great family guy and leader, devoted to the gods and intent on fulfilling their wishes? Is he a wuss for not standing up to them and their crazy demands? Whatever you say, sir. Are we supposed to think that city founding is always messy, but that something great comes out of it anyway? Or are we supposed to be a little skeptical about all of this war business anyway? Come up amongst yourselves. I think we got a little carried away. I'm tired of eating grapes. <laughs>